here at the Sport Aviation Showcase in Deland, Florida. Pipistrel had its first U.S. showing of the certified Pipistrel Velis electric airplane, but it's not certified for U.S. training operations yet, and it may be a while. Also, the numbers on motor and battery TBOs remain a work in progress. Here's the latest. So this is the Pipistrel Velis. It's the world's first and only certified electric airplane. It's fully EASA certified. Unfortunately, the FAA has been a little bit slower to allow for the use of electric aircraft for commercial purposes, including flight training. So at the moment, uh, there's three of these models in the United States. We're about to receive three more, but they are currently all flying under experimental certification here in the United States. We are hopeful that the Mosaic project that the FAA is working on and uh, going forward with in 2023, about a year and a half from now, will allow for uh, the commercial use of aircraft like these, uh, the Pipistrel Velis. So the Velis was designed as a primary trainer. It's got a flight time of about an hour with a 30 minute reserve. And because of that, it's primarily designed for traffic pattern use to teach students how to take off and land. Uh, coincidentally, it also works out as a great personal aircraft uh, to fly for about an hour, you know, flying around and just enjoying some fun. But the ultimate, uh, you know, market for this aircraft is the flight schools. So once the FAA figures out a way to allow the commercial use of these aircraft for flight training, um, we have a number of orders from existing clients who are ready to move forward uh, with large purchases of the Velis uh, for flight training purposes. This is a fully electric aircraft and it again it is fully EASA certified. The requirements for certification were quite difficult to accomplish and the, the levels of safety are orders of magnitude higher than that of the gas equivalents uh, because this is a new technology and EASA wanted to make sure that there were no faults with the system. So Pipistrel had introduced a number of electric aircraft first, including the Taurus in, I believe, 2010, the Alpha Electro in 2014, I believe, and of course the Velis was fully certified in 2020. Um, the infrastructure has changed from those earlier models, and the Velis, uh, the primary difference is that it is an entirely liquid temperature-controlled system. Everything from the batteries to the motor controller to the inverter and the motor are fully climate controlled, so to speak, for extreme hot heat and cold operating environments. Uh, and that was specified by EASA to meet certification objectives. Um, the batteries themselves, there's a battery pack uh, forward of the cockpit and aft of the cockpit, and that's for weight and balance purposes. It is a multi-redundant multi system uh, in terms of having two battery packs, but even within each battery pack, if individual cells fail, the battery management system is able to compensate for that. Um, so it's a very robust uh, architecture. Uh, everything from the uh, charging uh, device all the way through every single electrical component was over-engineered, over-designed, and over-built uh, for safety of flight. So because this is a fully EASA certified aircraft, uh, similar to how other manufacturers were required to start with a low time interval in service uh, until data came back, the same thing is being done with, the, with this system. So uh, it was started with a, I believe, 200 hour time frame and has increased to 500, 700, and I believe it's currently at 900 hours for the system. Um, but we do expect that to go above and beyond 2,000 hours. So every single client who receives one of these aircraft right now is sending the data back to Pipistrel uh, for analysis, and that data is showing uh, very, very positive results, and so that's allowing that TBO to be continually increased. The, the intent is that every Velis that was manufactured to date will meet the 2,000 hour TBO. So right now it's 900, but by the time the existing fleet gets to 2,000 hours, it's believed that EASA will have approved 2,000 hours. Once that is hit, um, the batteries are move, removed by an AMP uh, or European equivalent and sent back to Pipistrel uh, for overhaul uh, or replacement depending on the condition of the battery. Right now, the US versions of this airplane are around 250,000 US dollars. Um, it is a little bit higher than the gas counterparts. Of course, it's new technology, uh, that price point for battery technology has been dropping and will continue to drop. Um, but the overall, what you have to balance that against is the overall operating costs. Even factoring in the cost for battery overhaul or replacement together with uh, the work on the overhaul and replacement of the motor, it's 
really designed to have a significantly lower operating cost than the gas equivalent. So total, total cost of ownership over the lifetime of the aircraft uh, should be significantly less than a gas equivalent. Presently, the total cost of ownership of the electric aircraft, such as the Velis, uh, our goal is to achieve 50% reduction in total ownership costs versus a gas equivalent. So flight schools will of course have a charging station at their primary facility and they'll use the aircraft in the traffic pattern to teach students how to take off and land, normal and crosswind situations. But we also see in Europe, for example, where flight schools have specific airports they send their students to on cross countries, you can position a charger say 50 miles away at another airport and another charger 50 miles away such that the students can actually go on pretty good cross countries. So we foresee both uh, traffic pattern use but also the cross country use and we've been talking with significant universities um, about how to modify a 141 program to allow for use of the electric uh, altogether without the use of a gas equivalent. It's slightly better than one-to-one -one now if you have the proper uh, electrical wiring at your facility, let's say 220. Uh, so right now you're projected to fly, say, 50 minutes of flight time in the pattern, and you're looking at about 40 minutes of charging time if you have the 220 uh, set up.